Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 326. Each week we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus for G Suite users. Uh, and also the <laughs> dumb uh, SEO questions uh, Facebook group. With us tonight, we have David Roseanne. David is a leading uh, internet marketer based in uh, West Sussex uh, in the UK. Um, he is um, he can be found on davidroseanne.com and writing for seo.org. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based in Wimbledon, uh, in the heart of London, um, in the UK. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the um, AdSense community. Okay, so we've got 10 questions tonight. Our first question uh, is. Um, from Michaelis uh, APK, he asks the question, does incomplete microdata um, hurt uh, SEO? Uh, he specifically says uh, uh, sports events, for instance. Uh, have any of you monitored this on your sites? Um, are there any case studies available? Um, thanks in advance. Um, I don't know if the the question is actually um, posed in the correct way. Um, hurt SEO, uh, as uh, I, I'm just reading Michael Martin's um, response here. It's more or less what I was going to say. Um, it's not. It's not going to demote you. It's not going to. Um, Google is not going to come along and wrap your knuckles for having incomplete microdata. But if you're in a in a situation where microdata is important and your competitors have filled it out correctly, um, then you're likely not to have the same leverage as they are, um, which I think is uh, what Michael was going for. I can't read and waffle at the same time, unfortunately. Um, but um, um, I... I haven't monitored this on any sites and I don't have any case studies, but there's, there is this feeling that Google goes around and punishes you for, uh, for things. And yes, it does, but not for as many things as uh, some people think. Um, you've got to get stuff right. Getting stuff right gives you leverage and good results. Getting things wrong uh, just means that you don't, compete properly with, uh, with 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 others who have probably done it properly whatever it is uh, whatever factor it is so um stop worrying about being punished for it get your get your microdata get your content um get your internal linking whatever it is do it properly and your site will be more competitive yeah i think the important thing is um that when you have something incomplete that's not going to affect you negatively you might not get the benefit that you might otherwise have received i think the there would be problems if you habitually mark things up falsely or inaccurately mm -hmm. then um i don't think google will again punish you for such as such but it may start to ignore even the correctly marked up materials because if you had been spamming or providing false information using the markup previously then i think i may be corrected on this but my understanding is that google may then ignore your markup yeah Excellent answers from both of you. Thank you very much. Also, uh, I'd like to point out uh, 
forum heroes like Michael Martinez, uh, who front up uh, people who front up uh, almost every day on our uh, Damasio Questions Facebook group and answer questions uh, as they are asked. And for that, we are truly grateful. All right, let's go to number two on our run list. It's from Zawa Kamal. And it's titled, Is it a good idea to redact? redirect all broken links on to the home page uh he said no. i <laughs> no, no, no. um i just um received a project and the uh, previous um um the previous agency i guess uh, the old guys um we're redirecting every 404 um to the home page they were basically using a plugin that would redirect every broken link to the to the home page um shall i should i remove the plugin and deal with the uh, broken links is it worth it i'd say yes yes um if you've got loads and loads of these things, um, I guess the um, the easy way is to um, is to put them all to um, a nice custom 404 page. Um, if you want to do the job properly, um, redirect them to uh, a meaningful and related content-wise page. So. If you've got thousands of the things, um, you may need to think whether you can treat them in, in groups uh, rather than indi individual pages. Um, the other thing is, you know, the 404s happen um, and Google has not been, um, has, has, has said that, uh, that uh, 404s are not a worry so um you know they, they expect to see a site with 404s so um I, I i would see if i i i would have a look at these 404s and see if they can be um directed um uh, in, in, in groups to, to somewhere meaningful at least you'll get something out of them yeah i think the question is why are they broken are they broken because for example, you know, the site structure has changed. And you have different URL structure now compared to before. Then that might be somewhat easier to fix, perhaps, than if you have, let's say, 2,500 broken links, all of it's individually pointing to 2,500 different pages. So you know, I think I would look into why they're broken. And if links are pointing to a broken link points to a particular page, then prioritize the ones that have, as it were, a stronger concentration of broken links and see if that can be redirected to the current page. But I think you know, the answer to the question, the initial question is no. It's not a good idea. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you, David. Um, let's go to the next. Uh, this one uh, is from David PB Mac. Um, he said, it's titled, Is Google Console the best way to track my keyword clicks? Uh, David said, hey, guys, a quick newbie question. I don't think it's a newbie question. Um, would Google Console be the best way to track my keyword clicks per month? Uh, or is there a better way? I want to see if I'm getting more clicks per keyword each month. Thanks for any help.
I see Michael Martin has said, uh, Search Console is really the only source of reliable keyword specific click data you have. If your site earns a lot of traffic, Google Search Console may implement sampling. The best option is to download click data per day. And even then you may not get everything except for a, a low traffic website. Um, hmm. It is a source. Um, I just, the, the, pro, the problem with Google Search Console um, and uh, Google Analytics are uh, all those gaps in the keyword data. Um, so there are other places where you can get, um, uh, shall we say, services that try and fill in the gaps. So um, I'm I'm wondering whether behind this um, is a is a question about um, the keywords that actually get clicked on, or the searches that lead to clicks, um, and then we've got the question of what is actually coming through uh, and the gaps or whatever, but. Um, I guess as far as it goes, Michael is correct um, that uh, that Search Console is, a, is 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 the source of reliable keyword specific data. Am I getting lost in the undergrowth of this question, Mr. Taki? Mr. Taki has gone. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> We should point out SEMrush, I think, don't you think? Yes, yes, we should. Um, uh, yes, I should have done that specifically rather than skirt it. It was um, partly, uh, it was partly down to not being sure of what. Um, what the questioner was uh, was getting at. Okay, Semrus will give you a, a very nice list of um, um, of key phrases that uh, deliver um, deliver, uh, deliver traffic to your website, um, and I use it for that reason. Um, whether it is as reliable as uh, Google Search Console, I don't know, but it fills in a lot of gaps and it's valuable for that reason. Yep. And I should also point out that Simrush graciously provides uh, Guru subscriptions to the Simrush toolset um, to um, some of the panels on dummy SEO panelists on WTO questions. All right, let's go to number four on our run list from Scott Clark. It's titled Contributor Bylines for Blog Posts. Scott said, uh, what is the current best thinking on, on contributor bylines for blog posts at very high EAT companies? EAT, uh, what's that acronym stand for? Oh, well, I'll read the rest of the question. Uh, in the past few years, and recently via the uh, Quality Raters Guidelines discussions on EAT uh, authorship and brand SEO, it has become less clear to me um, what types of blog posts slash bio strategies is best for contributor posts at high authority companies. The options frequently used for bylines of high authority contributor posts are one, author, human name, contributor two, company name, two, author, human name, three, author, company name, team, e.g. ghostwriting, and four, no author byline on contributed articles. Whereas one and two may or may not link to uh, an author name bio, linked to all other posts, 
they, they've done for company name. I wrote years ago uh, how specific ghostwriting approaches at Buzz Maven, um, feel free to Google it, thank you for the plug, um, are less desirable, but I would love to hear the opinions of others. I think there's a lot of um, good discussion in the community answers I'm uh, I'm scrolling through at the moment. Um, I think you know I, I think that we have a um, personally a, a, a lot more knowledge in amongst those who contribute there uh, than I have. Um, I I think there's. Um, one thing that that strikes me um, is that EAT doesn't seem to be a uh, a, a ranking factor in, in itself, but that's not what the question is asking. Um, I think it's just saying very high rated, very high, uh, very good websites, perhaps. Um, so. Hmm. No, I don't know. I have no. Uh, I'm just waffling. Um, as I say, I think I think we can do no worse than uh, than to read um, read some of the contributions in the uh, uh, in the forum. Well, I think I think the whole point of byline is to ensure. To make it clear who wrote this piece and that information then in turn gives us indication gives well the readers the indication whether this article is worth reading or whether this article is you know written by an expert <laughs> who may be authoritative and trustworthy um so in that sense i think I personally would go for something like one, you have a name, then the organization or the company that the person belongs to. Think about journalistic and academic citations. You'd have the name, and in most cases, then you'd have, with, you know, if it's an outside source, it will say, which organization that person works for. If it's an agency wire, they would say, you know, name, comma, Reuters, or AP, or something like that. And when you quote someone from outside, and if it appears in newspaper, then you'd give the newspaper title. Same with academic citations in many cases. The name, the department or the faculty, an institution. So what they what these things do, giving out the names of organization, companies, institutions, what they do is they in a sense vouch for the person, right? If someone is working for this particular organization, then you do think that organization in turn vouches for that person. If someone is from a department of whatever, at a university of wherever at least and is writing on that topic then you could say that the university and the faculty department they are in a sense vouching for that person and i as a reader would say okay i don't i haven't heard of this person before but if this person works for company xyz or is a researcher at this institute then i'm maybe more inclined to trust the content of that piece. So I'd approach it from that perspective. You know, the byline should give information that is useful to the reader. And it's a quick way for the reader to assess the credibility of that piece. And information should, you know, 
information provided should reflect that. Thank you, Masataki. I was just reading that conversation. Um, it can be seen on the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, and um, I, I recommend that you do have a look at it. Okay, uh, Casey Marquis points out um, a, 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 a SEMrush uh, webinar um, dealing specific with, specifically with uh, the topic and um, input from Casey and uh, um, Mar Mar Marie Haynes Bacon. Okay, let's go to the next. Number five is from Nazmon Neha. Um, does Google read our links before JavaScript cha changes it? Uh, Nazmon said, uh, our site is on Drupal, so by default, comment section replies are loaded with Ajax and replies uh, are loaded from a, a URL slash another page. So every reply creates a URL. As I don't want to face the thin content issue and don't want to use too many uh, no follow slash no index. So our developer um, tried a uh, new uh, solution. In our HTML, we could have those links, but we can change it dynamically with JavaScript. My question is, does Google read our links before the JavaScript changes it? One point I'd make is that Google ranks pages, not sites. Um, so uh, I don't, there's any, any need ever um, for a concern about uh, thin content. Another magnificent answer from Michael Martinez scrolling through. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I, th I think Nasman is um, making things complicated when there's no need to do so. Yeah. It's, it's overthinking, overcomplicating things where perhaps there isn't a necessity to do so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm generally not in favour of trying to fudge things. I think that gets, you know, in a, in a general principle, don't fudge things. Don't try and make things look different from what they are. Um, and I think that that's what how this uh, th this falls into this category quite thoroughly and quite comfortably. Um, it's a bit of a okay. It's a bit of a broad brushstroke, but uh, there are so many things that uh, we as SEOs or developers can do to websites to uh, to make them supposedly better. Um, and so many times they just cause problems. And I think this is one of them. I think just leave it alone. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to the next. Number six on our run list is from Neil Cheeseman. Um, it's a question that Neil's asked a few different times with, with a few different, you know, in a few, few different ways. He's, it's titled, What to Do with the Expired Events Pages. Neil said, the scenario is about 1,000 events slash shows across 20 plus venues each year. Each event lasts a few days or a week or two. The question is, what to do with the expired events? Two of the leading websites in this market seem to leave the expired events uh, with the same pages slash URLs, uh, etc. A benefit from this will no doubt be to capture some diminishing traffic trail, but content that won't satisfy the users, uh, although while on site, they may go elsewhere on the site. 
The alternative is to delete these URLs and let them go to uh, an optized with content 404 page. Suggestions uh, and a discussion of pros and cons. Well, I, I agree with Scott. Um, if you could get content on that particular event, and then you know, people might have reviews or um, impressions about the events. And if people can be, you know, um, coaxed into writing them for your site, that's interesting content. And if it's an event, if it's simply event is going to happen in the future, then that's a good thing to have on your site. So if it's the same person performing, if, let's say it's the same stand-up comedian performing, the same venue, then it might be useful to have the past, you know, past events um, with perhaps a few reviews from people who went to that event. And then you know, if you can then link to the current or future events, that might be a one way of getting custom. So my instinct is to leave them. Yeah, my my instinct is that as well. In fact, it's more than instinct. I, I think that um, um, if you've got something like um, similar events or um, forthcoming events in the same venue, you know, that's that's a real real value to someone. Oh dear, you know, we've uh, we've missed the comedy, the the comedian that was last week. But oh, there are other other comedians performing in the same venue or this same person is uh, is performing somewhere else um that's all valuable stuff um and I, I think i saw scanning the community answers that 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 sort of stuff is already on this page i think yeah i, I don't see any point in getting rid of these expired events pages there's there's actually something uh, there, there's actually value in knowing that you've missed something um you know, oh, someone said Joe Bloggs was performing. I wonder if I missed it. Yes, it, yes, I have. Okay, done. Not spend the next hour trying to find out where Joe Bloggs is performing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't see any, uh, any hang up at all about having expired events pages, particularly if you've got some, some valuable information on which it appears from what I've scanned. It has. Yeah. By the way, I just want to pick out a, a couple of uh, comments um, in the uh, good conversation uh, attached to this question uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, between Neil Cheeseman and Michael Martinez. Neil said uh, the downside is the increased use on the server, etc. Um, and Michael Martinez said, unless you have a very poor server, you don't need to worry about the potential load. Um, totally agree with that. But look, I see it so many times where people, um, you know, put all this effort in, into doing things and then attempt to use, a, you know, a, a, a throttled server um a um a shared server uh, um you know just 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 hosting rubbish um to put their site on and and yet it it has the uh, capacity to um leg rope um your your entire site all that hard work is for nothing if your server's too old and too slow or too weak or whatever Spend the money on decent hosting, please. Anyway, yeah, I I, ag I agree with you totally, Jim. I, I'm I'm I've had a, a lot of this recently. So many websites I've had some involvement with um, are on just crap hosting, and there's this. Oh, we're going to have to move it. Oh, there's all this stuff. 
but you're gonna you're gonna be throttling you're going to be killing your business if you don't put it on a decent server um yeah it just surprises me how many crap hosts there are out there and i'm not going to say who i'm not going to name 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 names but come on david <laughs> sorry come on david name them <laughs> no 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 um uh, i know when, when i may get into trouble but um no you know if you're if if your um, if your host is rubbish, just move to a decent one for God's sake. Yeah, and you yeah. don't really have to spend a lot of money um, on um, good hosting, but um, people that go out and want to spend five dollars a month, ten dollars a month, twenty dollars a month, they're wasting their time. They should get serious. I mean, it's like trying to carry a barrow load of bricks on a skateboard and um you know you, you've got to spend all this effort on the website go the full mile and uh, get some decent hosting anyway let's move on will we yep okay yeah uh, jaya sanka jaya krishnan asks the question it's titled should i remove the address from the old website Jaya Sanka said, um, I have a new client. Good luck, mate. Well done. Um, they want to optimise and bring in traffic to a brand new website rather than have, having me work on their present website. They want to keep, uh, they want to preserve uh, the present website as a company portal. I'm planning to use the secondary office address for uh, Google local listing purposes. And uh, the primary office address listed in the Google no, is listed in the Google Knowledge Panel. But the problem is that the secondary address is already listed on the present website. So should I remove the address from the present website? I'd say no, but I don't even know why I'm saying that. Um, yes, uh, I was. I was just think, thinking. No, now why am I saying this as well? Uh, so yeah, uh, I think we on the uh, on the panel here are uh, are as one. Um, the uh, da, 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 da. no, it's just, there's no there's no worry at all about keeping that on the present website um our thoughts are confirmed david by scott henderson uh, in the comments on this one uh, in that can be seen on the WCA questions facebook group scott said it is completely acceptable to leave the second address on the primary website no need to remove it i'm slightly confused <laughs> confused at Wimbledon yeah so okay so I mean I, you know, I don't exactly understand understand the situation that's a problem for me so they won't so they're going to be two sites right yes so yeah. he's going to work on a new one there's an existing one the existing one is going to be a portal mm -hmm. not exactly sure what that means um, Okay, so that's so the two sides. There will, there will be two sides. Okay, I got that far. Now, that the secondary office address for Google local listings, so that's the Google My Business side of things, isn't it? Yeah. So the secondary address is going to be going to be on the map. The primary office address. And I'm assuming these are physical poster addresses, not the website addresses. And that may be the source of confusion. But I'm assuming this is to be the poster address. Yeah. And that's already on Google Knowledge Panel. And that's confusing me. Is the confusion because I'm confusing between website addresses and physical addresses? Is that the reason why I'm sort of I yeah I, I thought the the situation was that, that there were two uh, two GMB um, um, 
listings for the main and the secondary office. Um, and the uh, and the schema was set up for the uh, for the for the main the original website for the main um, postal address and the the other one uh, the secondary address um, was set up uh, with, with with schema and all that GMB stuff on the second uh, site. Um, so what's going to be associated with the first website <laughs> or the website is going to work on so the, 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 I, I take it that, that that there's a uh, um hang on let's read this again let's make sure the present website has a secondary address which is for the gmb purpose as oh, it right I, so, I i read this that there was a there, there, there was a primary address on it, and it's got a secondary address. Oh, God. No, I've misread this. Do you see why I'm confused? Yes. Yes, I thought this was all very simple, and was I was as, as I described it. But um, you're, now, you're now telling me that uh, I have misread this. I have read what I think is there rather than what is there. So the present website... So the, let's call it old site for the purpose of this discussion, because um, Jayashankar is going to create a new site. So that's going to be a new site. So there are going to be two websites. Yep. So, OK, so the old website has the secondary address, according to this thing. Yeah? Yes, I, I thought the secondary office address was an additional address. Well, that would be the implication of secondary. So that... Yeah. Uh, you know, is there corporate headquarters that's listed? But the but then the primary office is not a, isn't doesn't appear anywhere at the moment. Not 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 in the paragraph we are reading. No, no. I thought the implication was that uh, that there was a primary uh, a headquarters address that went that was going on the company portal. Yeah. But that, um, that, that it's got various locations that do different things, and there's going to be a website for all of them. And um, presumably, those locations would would all have uh, a GMB um, um, entry. Presumably, but maybe not. Yeah. I think uh, I think uh, Jan Sanka needs to give us a bit more uh, a bit more clarity here um, on what we've got. I think that uh, I carry on with what I said to begin with, but um, I fully agree that there could be many different ways of uh, the reality. Maybe um, there there may be several other realities here that. Uh, that uh, may or may not be real or whatever. Um, thank you, Mr. Taki, for completing completely clouding the water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's um, move on to the next. By the way, Mr. Taki, don't worry about being slightly confused. At my age, that's an optimal state. At my age, it's a continual state. Okay. Uh, Michael Mason asks a question titled, A competitor is using our brand to steal clients. I know how he feels. It makes me boil. Anyway, he said a competitor is using our brand to steal clients. How can I get their website removed from the... Uh, search engine result pages good luck with that plan the competitor has put up a website that takes genuine clients looking for business a and sends them to business b including payment data we need to find a way uh, to get this fraudulent website uh, removed from search engine results pages any suggestions uh, he said we've already contacted the hosting company but they're simply ignoring us
Mm. Well, the first question I'd ask uh, is, is the trademark registered? Um, and if, if the trademark is registered, then you can go to Google and you can stop them um, um, from uh, using your trademark in, in, in a Google ad. Um, um, you can go to uh, use the DMCA process if the trade, well, whether the trademark's registered or not, actually. I think you can use the DMCA uh, process um, to um, uh, complain, and uh, that, that's a whole lot slower, but uh, that might um, have them de indexed. Anyone help me with that one? Yeah, and I think talking to a lawyer would be a good idea. Intellectual property lawyer um, who could draw up a very um, terse letter to be sent to the owner of the site and perhaps the hosting company and see what they say. First, if you talk to a lawyer, then the lawyer would be able to say whether you have a case and they would know how to proceed and they can write very mean letters which do sometimes uh, work yeah okay um and karujiman Shuvo agrees. He said, file a DMCA. You just Google DMCA uh, and um, not sure what the acronym means. Um, what words? Um, oh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, I think. Thank you, Masataki. That's exactly it. Well done. I'm not sure that that's, that's applicable, though, is it? That's. Uh, as if you've if, if they've gone and nicked the the site in some yeah. way um i'm not sure that that applies to 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 um uh to to um to i agree i don't think i'm not necessarily sure if that would be the way to proceed no. if it's fraudulent then you know if if there is fraud then that is in many cases actionable thing again you need to talk to the lawyer about that. Yeah. Um, if they use abusing your trademark or intellectual property, um, then that's another angle to proceed. Um, if they're using a domain name, for example, that's very similar to yours or incorporates your name into domain, for example, then that might be actionable again. Um, so I think there are different ways of proceeding um and yeah i think as stockbridge truslow said talk to a lawyer yes talk talk to a lawyer um i'm also wondering where this um where this fraudulent where this imitator this imitation site is ranking um if you've got a decent site yourself um you should be ranking pretty well for your brand. Um, so, I'm, you know, if, if, if this fraudulent site is ranking, you know, down on page five or something, uh, they probably aren't, uh, uh, aren't siphoning off very much business from you, if any. Um, so I also need to, you also need to have a look at what, you need to consider how much uh, business they really are siphoning off here. Um, because it's all right saying go and see a lawyer, but that is a, um, that's a good way to spend lots and lots and lots of money. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and of course there's consumer protection side of things as well, depending on where you are. Um, if someone is misleading potential uh, customers, then that's an issue. So sometimes mm -hmm. you, know, you can receive advice uh, for free. Um, so 
yeah, I'll definitely look into different routes, but it, it may not be particularly easy or quick to get rid of them from the search results. Google may not be particularly amenable to removing them that quickly. Yes. Okay, I think we've covered this one for Michael. Um, our penultimate question is from Amanda Lewinsky. Um, it's titled Location Based Search. Um, and Amanda tells us it's her first question. She said, uh, Hi, all, thanks for accepting me into the group. You're welcome. I have a basic question. Um, if I Google yoga classes near Dallas, uh, brackets, not the real term, my site appears number three in the search results. If I Google yoga classes near me, I get a completely different set of results, uh, even though uh, I am close uh, to Dallas. Some results are much further away and my site is not listed at all. How does this work? And can I influence the results at all? Do I simply have to add near me in my content? Thank you. Um, well, near me is, 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 the, is the key thing here. Um, as you said, your, your near me can change. Um, and so the, if, if you are at the center of where Google thinks Dallas is, you will probably get something like the same results in theory. Um, however, if you're somewhere not there, but you are near Dallas, but you're not near where um, Google says Dallas is, then um, you're not at Dallas and therefore you don't get a um, you don't get a, a, a set of search results that um, that when that are yoga classes near Dallas because you're not actually near Dallas if you see what I mean you are where you are so yoga classes near me comes out of where Google is aware of where you are through geolocation and so on and so forth so um, if you, you could, yes, because um, you, you, you ask about near me and the content. No, that doesn't work uh, because near me is not uh, a key phrase match. It's a, uh, it's a geolocation match. So, um, and you'll end up with a load of uh, copy that won't actually make any sense if you keep putting near me uh, in, your, in your content. Um, it doesn't mean anything to the reader. Um, they don't know where you are. So um, it's proximity to uh, to the business and where you are. Um, so there you go. Um, it's not. Uh, it's it's a different location uh, from Dallas, and that's why there's a different set of results. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, certainly does. All right, anything more for uh, Amanda? All right, let's um, go to our last question. This one from Zoa Kamal again. Um, it's titled Domain Authority is down by almost 40 points. I might point out that Domain Authority is just a notional number. Uh, um, from uh, Moz, um, and um, you know, it really doesn't mean anything, it's, it's just a number. He said, My couple of websites lost domain authority uh, in a few days. Is there something going on with Google? Oh, yes, I should point out that Moz recently changed their um, calculation of domain authority, which is probably what happened. Uh -huh. Yes, that that might uh, that might account for it. 
Yeah. Um, Zawa said that the domain authorities are down by almost 40 points, according to AHREFs. Any suggestions would be very helpful. Thanks. Um, the, um, the answer is don't worry about domain authority. Um, it doesn't link with the real world. Uh, unfortunately, the real world is Google um, and domain authority to do with, uh, or Google doesn't have anything to do with Moz or Ahrefs domain authority. Um, so look at what's happening in the real world, see how your uh, websites are performing, if you're still getting the traffic you want from them, carefully and uh, with with total um, total aplomb, drop the idea of domain authority in the news bin. Yeah, and uh, agreed um, by the people in our uh, Damasio Questions Facebook group uh, comments. All right, it's that time again. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back um, at the same time next week um, to do this all again. I'd like to thank uh, David Rosam and Masataki Wasa for their uh, contribution tonight. Um, we thank you for uh, uh, taking an interest in, in what we do. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, we'll do we'll do it again do it all again next week um, but for now uh, it's um, good night